Joining us on the line now is Kishan Devani. Kishan is the Lib Dems Treasurer's Envoy and the Vice President of the Lib Dems Campaign for Race Equality. He was also the former Conservative candidate for Parliament and London Assembly, as well as the former Deputy Chairman of the London Conservatives. Kishan, how are you? Hi, good evening. How are you? Good, thank you. Thank you very much for coming on Kingston Green Radio. Of course, we'll, we'll get in firstly on the fact that it is Conservative Conference, or it was today, it's just finished. Were you a little bit sad not to be at Conservative Conference? Is this the, is this the first one you've missed? Uh, it is, actually, in, in a few years. So it was, uh, I, I attended the Liberal Democrat Conference, as you can imagine, uh, which I hear was much more upbeat than, than, than this Tory conference. But it was a bit different, actually. It was a bit weird not going to the Tory conference this year, but I'm glad I didn't, actually, how, after listening to, to what was happening there. Now, of course, I know you've done a fair few interviews on this, but tell us once again, for listeners who, who don't know, as I said, you were a former Conservative parliamentary candidate, GLA candidate, deputy chairman of the London Conservatives, quite high up within the party. Why did you leave the Conservatives? And then also, why did you decide the Lib Dems was your political home? Well, yeah, well, I most definitely found my political home now. But I, I felt actually the twofold, two reasons, or well, two major reasons why I, I left the Conservatives. And it, and it took me a long time, as you can imagine, Changing one's party is, is very, very personal. It's very, very difficult. It took me, you know, about 18 months to make this, this decision. And, and one of the two major reasons was Brexit, number one. And number two was this real lurch to the right that I experienced and I saw firsthand. So the first thing, Brexit. I mean, where do I begin? Uh, all of us can see the shambles that these, uh, these people have created. But, uh, you know, the, the fact is the hostility towards minorities in this country that have, has, has come about by this Brexit vote and the complete lies that the entire referendum was held on, you know, and, and this complete ideologically driven Brexit that the Conservatives want to deliver, come what may, you know, it is, it is a hard right Brexit that they ideologically are being driven towards and they're taking the country off a cliff with them. So that was the first thing. The second thing was actually experiencing uh, alerts to this right. You know, I'm a product of immigration. My uh, parents came over um, during the Ugandan exodus. You know, I'm the son of refugees and I'm on the phone to a radio station now in, in one generation. I will tell you that, you know, what a son of a refugee can actually achieve in this country. And that is why our country prides itself on liberal, tolerant democracy. But unfortunately, the current uh, establishment, the current government has seen this lurch to the right where even its own members of parliament have said that Enoch Powell days are coming back, and which is very worrying to me. And, and, and for me, that was one of the major reasons for me that I left a government party, a party in, in government, um, for my conscience, because I truly believe uh, conscience comes before one's career. Now, I'm going to pick you up on a few things you said then, because you mentioned that there's been this perhaps hard right Tory Brexit that they're pursuing and that, you know, leaving the single market, leaving the customs union is kind of signifies that. Surely that's what yeah. people voted for, Kishan. Well, well, that's what I've not been hearing at the doors. And, you know, and, and if it was what people voted for, well, then, uh, you know, it's not what I've been hearing at the doors. And I think actually what recent polling suggests is people are, are wanting a people's vote. People want a final say. Uh, because the deal that David Cameron got, quite frankly, is not the deal that Theresa May is putting on the table. So I think people do have a right, you know, if we believe in democracy and if we believe in the will of the people, then we surely should believe in the fact that they did not get the full picture when they voted. And we can see that what transpired with all the, 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 the lies in, in the Leave campaign, which we all are aware of now. So everyone that I seem to meet, in fact, I was only talking to a Leave voter the other day um, who said that she voted Leave but would now like to, to go back to the ballot box. And, and, and after all of the lies have been revealed, she wants to vote Remain. So, you know, these are real stories, real life stories. I was on another radio station yesterday where someone else uh, called in um, and the listener called in and said exactly the same thing. So you know, it's not what we are hearing at the doors. And I think the Tories will have to come to terms with this. They will have to understand that the people deserve a final say. Now, of course, we're going to talk about your view on the new Conservative immigration policies, because I know you've been tweeting about that, and that's something we were going to touch on. But staying with the people's vote, I mean, do you really think that if there was a people's vote, that we would vote to remain, honestly, in your, in your heart of hearts, Kishan? Well, I would, I would hope that the public have seen the real lies of the Leave campaign, the real ideological um, sort of passion behind this Brexit and, 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 and actually reject it because I believe that, you know, people want to see a liberal, tolerant, open society. And I believe Brexit is not allowing for that. I believe the people pursuing Brexit are not allowing for that. So I would, I would hope that the British people, you know, people's vote would, would back remain. But of course, that's up to the people to decide. 
and uh, who am I to tell the people how to vote? But, but the fact is, is that I believe that we do need to have a people's vote to give a final say to the people who have, in my view, been cheated on and, 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 and do deserve a final say. Kishan, in the last election, 2017 election, you, you of course, voted Liberal Democrat in that election. Am I right in, in thinking? In 2017. In 2017. I had not joined the Liberal Democrats. Okay. So that, uh, I joined in uh, December, actually, of last year. Because so. a lot of people who voted for Brexit, and indeed, well, a lot of people who, who voted R- Remain, who, who haven't changed their mind and do think we should pursue Brexit, will say that, well, if you combine the total Conservative vote and the total Labour vote, both parties who are pledging for Brexit one way or another, perhaps both with different outlooks, I know Labour uh, perhaps want more uh, involvement with the single market than the Conservatives, Surely the Lib Dems, who, who I think received their worst result in history, surely that shows that people don't want a people's vote. Because I know you've been talking about polling. Where, where is the evidence for this polling? Well, I think, I think if you look at the Labour Party, they're completely split on this issue. And uh, if you ask their members, and I think uh, Mr Corbyn himself has been uh, looking to, to flirt with the idea of a people's vote because he knows that his party at grassroots levels would like a final say on this. So, you know, I, if you look at the polling, if you look at yesterday's or two two days ago, I believe there was a fringe event in, in Tory party conference that had lines of people queuing up to go to a people's vote fringe event. So even within the Tory party, there is a huge voice. If you look at Justine Greening, Anna Subri, Ken Clark, Dominic Grieve, I mean, the list is endless. So I think, you know, the fact is, is that their parties are both split on this. We are the only party that have a united voice on this that we would like a people's vote. Now, if you look at Lib Dem's election results, well, all you've got to do is look at the local elections in Kingston, uh, in Richmond, in Sutton, in Merton, where we picked up seats, in Haringey, in London. We picked up, We had the largest net gains, if I'm not mistaken, for council elections this year in the, in, 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 in the UK. So I think, you know, the, the election results are, are, and we're consistently picking up seats against, uh, the Tories and by-elections across the country. So I think this, the, 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 the electoral uh, process in itself is, of course, another matter of debate, mm. so whether we should have PR or not. But, but the fact of the matter is, is that we, we are uh, picking up seats because people are mm. listening, that actually they want, they want a, a, a final say on this. And I keep saying this, but the fact of the matter is, I hear it on a daily basis. So the frustration is there with the people now. So, you know, when, they, when, the, when the Tories go get up on stage and talk about the will of people, actually, you know, are they really, really bothering about the will of the people? Because if they were to meet the same people that we meet, they would, they're ignoring them completely. Now, of course, Conservative Party policy says that we shouldn't have a people's vote currently. That's, that's what the Conservative Party policy says. It's also that, you know, we should leave the, the single market and the customs union essentially checkers. Well, people like Anna Soubry and Dominic Grieve, if they're disagreeing with Conservative Party policy, why don't they just leave the party? Why don't they do what you've done? Or is it not, is it not a little bit that they're worried that they'll lose their seat and they'll lose the Conservative campaign machine behind them? Well, I can't. I can't comment on them. Would you, would you like to see them join the Liberal Democrats? Well, well, the Liberal Democrats, as Vince Cable has, has said, that the Liberal Democrats is a home for all, you know, moderates, for want of a better term. But it's the home for 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 anyone that wishes to to, to choose, uh, the, you know, centre ground way of life. And and I think, you know, if they, that's a matter for their own conscience. But the fact is, is that people are upset. Um, and you know, these are people um, of good judgment. These, these people. Um, are, are very good members of parliament as well. And, and you know, it, 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 it's a shame that they're having to be put through, um, you know, being sidelined in their political parties um, just for holding a particular view. And, and, and they have been. And, and, and that's, that is a shame. But we as Lib Dems are, are here to, to talk and, and work with everyone. And that's part of being what a Lib Dem is, I suppose. And finally, Kishan, what are your thoughts on the latest proposals regarding immigration that Sajid Javid recommended? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, for me, it's the height of hypocrisy, really, when you yourself are the son of a, uh, of a bus driver and have, and have benefited from, from immigration uh, to, to try and propose rules that would have stopped someone of your own background, uh, your own father, possibly, uh, to enter the country. It's, it's quite ridiculous, in my view. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it is a shame that we're going down this route, that we've created this anti-immigrant rhetoric in our country and, uh, and how it's been allowed to be going into mainstream politics. I mean, you know, it really is even so difficult to debate with people that come to the table that have a blanket view, blanket negative view of immigration. Um, how do you rationalize with them at the benefits of immigration? And, and, and you know, for, for the way they're, they're trying to impose these new language tests, etc., you know, uh, I think uh, the Home Secretary in his own article in The Guardian suggested that I think it took his own mother t- a decade to learn English. So, 
you know, for them now to then say that people who only have a particular standard of English can go into particular jobs. I mean, it, it is, it's very difficult to see how, you know, this hypocrisy can last and, and, and whether anything will ever be implemented anyway by this government. I actually have my doubts on that as well, because nothing's really happened for the last two years because of Brexit. So definitely no going back for you. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> as, you can, as you can hear, quite, quite tell. I mean, I just think, you know, I always say to people, uh, did I leave the, uh, the Conservative Party? No, I think the Conservative Party left me, you know, it, okay. and, 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 and that, that's a very powerful sort of message to, to hold. And, and many others, I can assure you, many of my uh, personal friends who were Conservative voters or even Conservative members now do not go out knocking on doors for them. They mm. do not go out spreading the message of Conservatism because it has left them, the party has left them. Kishan Devani, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.